and you see the writing in red. You said these are Jesus' words because they are in red. The correct term is Isimus Fox. Well, on the other hand, when you quote what Jesus said, or quote what one of the prophets said, it's not Isimus Fox. It's Isimus Verba. Okay. Out of the, you me preach today. Out of the seventeen prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah are the only two that gets the credit for writing the business box of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jeremiah comes in on the scene with a heart that is crying. His heart is screaming. But yet no one can hear the cry of his soul. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, who hears the cry of a screaming heart? What ear? What decibel is it? Who can hear the cry of a screaming heart? As you sit on that front pew, as you sit in the pews today with your family and loved ones, you're trying to keep the facade and trying to be strong, but on the inside, your heart is screaming. I love the illustrations. A little girl got a goldfish for her birthday. And the parents made the mistake and they left the hill on, on the aquarium. And they stayed on all night and all that next day when the little girl got home from school, she saw the little goldfish floating on the top and the water was boiling. And the little girl was so broke up, she was distraught because she had lost the little goldfish and the mother and daddy tried to sold her. And the little girl said something that got my attention. She said, Mama, when we walked by the aquarium and saw the fish swimming, it looked like it was doing well. But Mama, I wonder, was it screaming? And we didn't hear it. And ladies and gentlemen, every day we walk by people it looked like they got it all together. They tried well. They trust well. They got nice houses. They got bling bling on their sand. And they look like they got it all together. But if you listen real close, you will hear the scream. Back in 2000, my brother died two months later, my father died. A month later, my cousin, a month after being her mother, my first cousin died. Grandmother died in November, and then January, the man who raised me, my granddaddy, he died. This was the year because I was pastoring two churches. Fourteen members died within nine months. People would come and hear me preach and they would shake my hand. But if they had looked real close, at me, you would have known that my heart, heart is straight. And though your mom may have been gone 10 years or 20 years, when you walk by and look at a picture, when you look at a television show, she used to watch even now your heart. The scream. Jeremiah had a screaming heart. And he thought that if anybody would have talked to him or consoled him, it would have been God. And all the while, while he was meandering along, not one time did God say anything. Good preaching is 
is asking good questions. God, what are you saying when you don't talk to me? What are you saying to me when I pray and pray and I don't hear your voice? Like Jesus on the cross when he said, my God, my God, church, I pray, I sing in a choir, I'm a deacon, I'm a usher, I'm your preacher, I'm your servant, and I'm taking all these people which you're not talking to. Me. Taking the houses and I'm talking to me. Then when it's high blood pressure, you're not talking to me. If it ain't one thing, it's something else. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired why is it that you're not, not talking to me? Yeah. We just went to a funeral last month. Went to another two months ago last week. We were at a funeral. And here we are today. And we don't hear your voice. What are you saying mm. to me? I don't hear your voice. It was Dietrich von Hoffman, the great German theologian, who said, if you do not understand my silence, you won't understand my words. When people are close to you and know your heart, you ain't got to say nothing. They understand. You don't have to open your mouth. When you love somebody, you ought to be able to look at them and say, she's in pain. She's upset. He's going through. Anybody know what I'm talking about?
rich. And yet God loved me, he got everything.
tell me God's hand can be on me. And I still be struggling with my sexuality. You tell me God's hand can still be on me, and yet I still have weaknesses. It was marred in his hand. And although you sick, although you're struggling, although you have things going on in your body, just know God's hand is on you. Well, I'm about ready to go now. I don't know if y'all are going to help me to do good. If not, it's all right. I ain't coming back yet, so I'm going to be in the preacher. I'm gone. Well, uh, what do you mean uh, when you tell me God's hand uh, is on Well, uh, as I look at the power of working with that wheel, Thank 